Kustanika would be born Robert Cooper Phillips in April of 1975. Growing up, Coop would spend time in Dallas, Texas and in Memphis, Tennessee. To say that Coop had a troubled childhood is an understatement. His stepdad would be very abusive to his mother. Him and his siblings would try to intervene to help her out, but they were dealing with a grown man, which resulted in them being abused as well. There were a lot of things that Coop saw and went through that no child should have to endure. His mother would pass away when he was around 13 years old. He would rap about this on his song Life in Bondage. After the death of his mother, Coop would go into foster care. Some time into being in foster care, he would run away. Now I will say that there is not a ton of information out there about Coopsta in general, including his childhood. Throughout his career, he didn't do many interviews. What we do know is that he met DJ Paul while the two were in school. At first, Koopsta did not really like DJ Paul. The two did not go to the same school for long because Koop would get kicked out and then he would get kicked out of the next school that he went to. Eventually, Koop would attend the same school as Juicy J. His time at this school also would not be long due to Coop being shipped off to Knoxville, Tennessee due to him getting into more trouble. As mentioned, Coop would be in foster care throughout his adolescent and teenage years. While he was in a group home in Knoxville, he made it his mission to get everyone in the group home drunk so he could get kicked out. So as a result of this, Coop would land back in Memphis where he ran into a mutual friend between him and DJ Paul. This friend would ask Coop if he still talked to DJ Paul. Coop would reply to this and say that he had not spoken to DJ Paul in a while and the friend would give him DJ Paul's number. After some time, Coop would finally give this number a call and he would join what went on to be 3-6 Mafia. As described by him, at the time he joined, it was only him, DJ Paul, Juicy J, and Lord Infamous. This would be before Gangsta Boo and Crunchy Black joined the group. DJ Paul describes Kusta as being like a son to him. He would do an interview with DJ Small's eyes talking about this. In this interview, DJ Paul would say that Coop would move in with him around 1994. He would further say that he got Coop out of the group home. By 1994, Coop would be over 18 years old. It's kind of interesting that Paul looks at Coop as a son because DJ Paul was born in 1977, which means that he's a year or two older than Coopsta. But going back to 1994, this would be a very notable year, not only with Coopsta, but with 3-6 Mafia. This would be the year that 3-6 Mafia, under the name Triple Six Mafia, would release their first official project, Smoked Out, Loked Out. This is where we saw the formation of what we know today as 3-6 Mafia with all of the original members that we know and love. Koopsta would appear on this project on the tracks Now I'm High and Stash Bot. 1994 would also be the year that Koopsta would originally release The Devil's Playground. Now a lot of people know of the re-release of this album years later, but if you have not heard the original version of the album, you definitely need to go listen to it. I think it's really cool to listen to the original version because even though the quality isn't the best, you can hear the grittiness of the sound that you don't get with the re-release. But before I get any more into the video, I would quickly like to plug that I made a TikTok that you guys should go follow. I'm trying to get that popping, so definitely go out and support that. And if you haven't done it yet, go follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love. It's all good. 
The very next year, in May of 1995, is when 3-6 Mafia would officially release their debut album, Mystic Styles. A fun fact about this album is that Koopsta is the one on the cross of the cover. Those who know, know, but this album would really change the game and influence a lot of artists, even to this day. If you want to know more about 3-6 Mafia's influence, I did a whole video on that a while back. If you would like to see it, I'll put a link in the description for you guys. Why the album is named Mystic Styles is because each member of 3-6 Mafia had their own style. Personally, I feel like Koopsta not only has a very distinct style, but his voice is what really stands out to me. When Kusta comes on in a song, I can instantly recognize him. He would appear on songs like The Summer, Long Night, Sweet Robbery Part 2, Effin' With This Click, Porno Movie, Mystic Styles, and Gotta Touch On Part 2. Mystic Styles is what really got the ball rolling for 3-6 Mafia due to it being a success. According to DJ Paul, him and Juicy J only put $4,500 into this tape and it went on to make millions. It's also reported that at a point in time, the album managed to sell 200,000 copies independently, which is quite impressive. So with this, later on in 1995, 36 Mafia would release the Live by a Rep Bone Disc EP. It's an EP that has songs like Tear the Club Up, two different versions of Live by a Rep, and one of my favorite 36 Mafia intros, which is A New Nightmare. I'm really not going to go too much into detail about this EP, but if you want to know more about 36 Mafia's history with Bone Thugs and Harmony, I highly suggest that you go watch the video that I did on it a while back. But while doing research for this video, I came across a documentary from Koopsta that is a very interesting watch, to say the least. This is where I got a lot of information for this video from. One of the things that he would say in this documentary is that after the 1994 version of The Devil's Playground, Easy e wanted to sign him. What messed up this potential deal is when 3-6 Mafia started to feud with Bone Thugs and Harmony, which was Easy es group. Now that definitely would have been something if that is indeed true. But the next thing that would come for 36 Mafia is the release of Chapter 1 The End in December of 1996. Probably my favorite Koopsta verse from Chapter 1 is his verse on the song Stomp. He's the first member of 36 Mafia that we hear on the album with Stomp being the first song after the album's intro, Our Arrival. Koopsta really sets the tone with his distinct voice and unique style, but it would be after Chapter 1 The End when things really started to change for 36 Mafia. After the album, DJ Paul and Juicy J partnered with Relativity Records for national distribution of their indie label, Hypnotize Minds. One of the biggest reasons why they partnered with Relativity Records, according to DJ Paul, is because they did not want people to steal their sound. 3-6 Mafia would send a demo version of Chapter 1 The End to labels like Relativity Records, Sony Records, and various other labels before it came out. These labels said that they could not do anything with 3-6 Mafia at the time, so the group just put out Chapter 1 on their own. DJ Paul claims that the album managed to sell about 40,000 copies in his first couple of weeks independently with little to no promotion besides an ad in a source magazine. When Chapter 1 charted on the Billboard 200 is when the label started coming. It was between Relativity and Jive Records, but ultimately Relativity was chosen. In their contracts, it was specified that 3-6 Mafia needed to put the songs Late Night Tip, to the Club Up, and In Too Deep from Chapter 1 on their next project under them. This is why these songs also appear on Chapter 2 World Domination from Chapter 1 The End. The group was not happy about this at first, but it turned out to be a very smart move because Relativity allowed them to reach a wider audience. But with more popularity comes the fame. Chapter 2 World Domination would end up being a huge game changer for 3-6 Mafia. This album would end up releasing in November of 1997. It ended up peaking at number 40 on the Billboard 200. This was 86 spots higher than Chapter 1 because that would peak at 126 on the charts. But Chapter 2 is a classic without a doubt. So many bangers on this, but the big song that everybody remembers is Tear the Club Up. Do it like a 
Now fans of 36 Mafia know that they've redone songs that they've done in the past. Slob on my knob and break the law are some examples of this. I bring this up because Koopsta was not on the original version of To The Club Bub. If I'm not mistaken, he only appears on the 1997 version of the song. He doesn't feature on the version of the song that appears on Mystic Styles. In fact, on the Mystic Styles version, Juicy J and DJ Paul only mention him by name. Coop would appear at the end of the 1997 version. The 1997 version of To The Club Up was so popular that the song was allegedly banned in almost 20 states for a period of time. People were doing as the song says and they were literally tearing the club up when the song came on and chaos would ensue. Fights would break out and it was just pure madness. Another big song from chapter two would be the song Late Night Tip, which previously appeared on chapter one. Coop would appear at the end of this song as well. In an interview, Coop would say that Late Night Tip was originally going to be a solo song of his, but this was changed to feature the group. With the release of Chapter 2, 3-6 Mafia would start to change their sound. The first two albums were a lot darker, but with Chapter 2, we did get dark songs like Will Blast and I Ain't Your Friend. The crunk songs on this album are Tear The Club Up and Hit A M Effort. Joining Relativity Records also proved to be successful with Chapter 2 going gold and selling over 500,000 copies by 1998. The following year in 1999 is when The Devil's Playground would get re-released. This was a re-recorded and remastered version of his 1994 album with the same name and also featured an alternate track list compared to the original. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. It's truly a masterpiece. Songs like Torture Chamber, Stash Pot, Front of Busta, Now I'm High, and What You're Gonna Do are absolute bangers. Another one of my favorite songs is the song Crucifix, which is sadly not available on streaming services. The song is just insane. That beat and how Kusta just effortlessly glides over it is just absolute perfection. It's kind of crazy to imagine that Koopsta originally did all this back in 1994. Koop and pretty much the rest of 36 Mafia were truly ahead of their time. Some of these songs you can picture dropping this year and not sounding dated or even out of place. Leading up to 2000, Koopsta would appear on numerous 36 Mafia projects such as the first two Underground Volume series. But it would be on 36 Mafia's fourth studio album When The Smoke Clears that everything would start to change. When The Smoke Clears would release in June of 2000, peaking at number 6 on the Billboard 200. This is the album that went on to be platinum. The cover is something that really stands out to me about the album, and Koopsta is not on the cover art. Despite this, he does appear on numerous songs on the album like Who Run It, I'm So High, and Tongue Ring. Sipping on Some Scissor was the big song off of this album, but Koopsta does not feature on it. He does feature on the other big song from this album, which is Who Run It. As good as this album is, it sadly would be the end of an era. After this album, both Koopsta and Gangsta Boo would leave 36 Mafia. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a video on Gangsta Boo. I originally had plans of doing a video on her at the beginning of the year, but her death made me cancel those plans. My goal was for me to do a video on every single member of 36 Mafia. I previously did a video on 36 Mafia's influence, a nearly hour long documentary on 36 Mafia that I had to sadly take down, and a video on Lord Infamous that you should definitely go check out. One of the most beloved videos that I've ever done. Gangsta Boo was next in line, but the timing of her tragic death made me not want to make it so soon. So let me know if you would still like to see it. But like I said, her and Koopsta would leave the group. For her, it was a little bit more complicated, but ultimately she really needed a lifestyle change. This was not the same for Koopsta because he would end up leaving the group following arrest on charges of domestic violence, assault, and aggravated burglary. This is said to have breached his contract with Sony Records. After Chapter 2 World Domination is when 36 Mafia moved from Relativity to Loud Records. The parent company of Loud Records is Sony. In the documentary that I mentioned earlier, Koopsta takes full responsibility for what happened between him and the group. 
he acknowledges that it was his fault that he was constantly in and out of jail when he was a member of the group. Koopsta being in and out of jail resulted in him missing a lot of things. Shows, interviews, video shoots, studio sessions, I mean you can name it. Being in and out of jail happened all the time before 2004 Koopsta, but as soon as the group got with Loud Records, this was a wrap due to it breaching his contract. This was at the worst time possible because 3-6 Mafia were growing in popularity and would grow to be more popular as the years went on. No longer with 3-6 Mafia, Coop would embark on his solo journey after the group with the release of The Cave Project in 2002. He would not stop here because the very next year in 2003 is when he would release Underground Music Volume 1. This is the second best project from Coopsta that I've ever heard. He was in true form on this project and I think the highlight of this project has to be the song Voodoo Village outro. Everything about this song is immaculate and proved that Koopsta could make great music without DJ Paul and Juicy J. In 2004, the problems between Coop and the remaining members of 36 Mafia would reach a boiling point. Before the release of Coop's album The Inevitable, he would take shots at the group. Did the last 36 album, did that motherfucker go platinum? He go platinum with gold. Damn, I wonder why. Is it because me and Boo gone? But gold with four niggas? Tell the club of thug, the crunch of black does not make sure but since Mafia, man. I'm back. Okay. We got The Inevitable coming out July 13th. For everybody thought I was just gone, I might was sleep, but I ain't lost shit. I'm back at home since Pat ain't with Hypnotize. What the fuck is wrong with Hypnotize minds, man? How y'all gonna let Boo go, Chat go, and I know y'all just carry crunching this stupid ass. Along with our labels. The unfortunate thing about this video is that one of the men who were in the background of this video would allegedly be robbed by Koopsta just a year later in 2005. Police say the rapper Robert Koopsta Cooper is a suspect in a November 1st robbery at an apartment in Raleigh. I'm gonna kill you. All this, just I'm gonna kill you. Fellow rapper Justin Little J Thurman says Cooper and another suspect robbed him and a friend at gunpoint. He says the men knew exactly what they wanted, $7,000 in cash. Thurman says Cooper knew he had it and was helpless and unarmed when he stole it. During this news report, it was also reported that Koopsta felt like 3-6 Mafia were affecting his solo career, basically trying to blackball him and prevent him from having success on his own. Juicy J would deny this. Koopsta getting arrested came before the release of The Mind of Robert Cooper, which he was promoting at the time. While Coop was behind bars, 3-6 Mafia would be at the peak of their commercial success in 2006 when they won an Academy Award for Best Original Song. This would be for the 3-6 Mafia song Hard Out Here For A Pimp, which was featured on the Hustle & Flow movie soundtrack. This also came off the heels of a successful 2005 when 3-6 Mafia dropped Most Known Unknown. This album would go gold months after its release and by the end of 2006 it would go platinum. Stay Fly and Papa My Collar were big hits off of this album. The Oscar win would really elevate 3-6 Mafia and their popularity. I mean they got a whole show on MTV after this. Koopsta would see all of this from the outside behind bars. Due to all the legal issues that were going on with Koopsta he had to sit down for a minute. Years would go by and he would finally return to music with the release of A Murder in Room 8 in 2010. He did some interviews around this time and he had a lot of plans for his music career. He kept the music coming with the release of Decepticon, The Return of the Gods in 2012, and Aliens vs. Humans in 2013. His last solo album ever, Screw God, would come out in 2013 as well. In the same year that Screw God would be released is when The Mafia 6 would release their debut mixtape, Six Commandments. The Mafia 6 basically being a group comprising of all of the original members of 3-6 Mafia minus Juicy J. This was looked at as a whole new project separate from 3-6 Mafia because Juicy J was absent. It's kind of wild that this managed to happen if you know all of the background issues and beefs that happened within the group. I mean especially Koopster being a part of this due to the reputation that he had. There are numerous stories from members of the group regarding how wild Koopster was. Crunchy Black and DJ Paul have specifically commented on this. 
so the fact that they got mostly everybody back together is quite impressive. The whole reason the Mafia 6 came together was because DJ Paul and Lord Infamous were in the process of rebirthing their Come With Me To Hell series. While doing this, Lord Infamous decided that it would be better to try and reunite the old 3-6 Mafia instead. Shortly after the release of Six Commandments, Lord Infamous would sadly pass away. This really hit everybody hard due to Lord Infamous being such an integral part of 3-6 Mafia and how nice of a person he was behind the scenes. In 2015, the Mafia 6 would release their debut album, Watch What You Wish. Gangsta Boo would leave the group before the release. Koopsta would appear on this album, but it would sadly be his last hurrah because he would pass away later that year in October. This would be another big blow to the group because they were now down to four of the original members. Koop had a lot of things in the plans prior to his passing. The big thing that he was promoting at the time was the sequel to The Devil's Playground. And due to his passing, the project never saw the light of day. I'm sure that the project would have been amazing. Big RIP goes out to Koopsta. Koopsta leaves behind an impactful legacy. He is one sixth of what I and many people believe are the most influential rap group of all time, which is 36 Mafia. I also think that they have a case to be the greatest rap group of all time. Most influential without a doubt though. Even the impact of Koopsta's solo work can be felt today. He's spoken about listening to the radio and hearing artists replicate his style, but not paying homage. There will never be another Koopsta and that's what makes him so special. Everything he did was unique and stood out amongst his peers. The Devil's Playground is one of the best projects that I've ever heard. We constantly hear that such and such artists were ahead of their time, but Koopsta was truly ahead of his. Like I said, he was making music in 1994 that sounds like it could have been made today. It really sucks that his actions prevented him from going further with 36 Mafia. It would have been awesome to hear him on songs like Papa Makala, Stay Fly, Side to Side, Half on a Sack, etc. But we can appreciate the work that Koopsta did while he was living. Outside of making this video because I would like to do a video on all of the original members of 36 Mafia, I really wanted to give Koopsta his flowers. He was such an amazing artist that had a horrific childhood that deeply affected him until his untimely passing. But all in all, that pretty much wraps up this video. What do you guys think about Koopsta? Y'all let me know in the comment section below. You guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. I'm out. Love you guys.